this weekend, my wife and I, we love Saturday Night Live. So we've been watching these, re uh, on one of these channels, they, they've been replaying all the old Saturday Night Live episodes. So she turns to me during one of them and she says, you know, you look a lot like John Belushi. <laughs> I'd much rather be referred to as Arnold Schwarzenegger or Danny DeVito than John Belushi. Right off the bat, we, we got going, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that I, that I feel are really important uh, to being a, a leader and, and, and leadership in general, especially since the season ended. You know, how did you do it? You, you know, how did you come into a situation that, that people on the outside said was a, was a dire situation, that, that there was no way it could get any worse than this? And, you know, number one, I, I will tell you that Penn State is a very unique and special place. And, and, and Penn State is a unique and special place for many, many, many different reasons. And, and I found that out really during the interview process, and then I've really come to find that in, in the last year that I've been here. And it's, there's so many reasons, and, and I start with the education. You know, Penn State is a school where there are over 150 different majors offered to these students. I mean, that's incredible. You think about the opportunity that these young people have. There's about 40,000 undergrads at Penn State. And you think about the opportunity that they have. And, and that's one thing that Penn State's about. Penn State is about the alums. There are 600,000 active alums at Penn State. The pride that these people have in their alma mater is incredible. And what that does for the students that are there now as far as networking, it's incredible. Penn State is about, in my opinion, a fantastic athletic department. Penn State, when, when you talk about the football program, to me, when you look at all the things that go into that football program, the facilities, uh, the stadium, uh, the, the players that I'll talk to you a little bit about here today, it's just, it's a top 10 college football program. Now, over the next three years, is it gonna be difficult? Sure, but if there's anything worthwhile in life, isn't it kind of difficult to get there? Don't you have to overcome some adversity to, to be successful? You know, we, we hear all the time on the outside, and not so much anymore, but especially in the beginning about, boy, there's dark days ahead for Penn State. Now, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. I see a very unique and special place with a bunch of great uh, people that I'm surrounded with. You know, number one is communication. And what, I, what I'll do is when I, when, I, when I talk about this, I'll weave this into what happened this year at Penn State. Communication to me is really important in being a, being a good leader. And so when I came to Penn State, I felt like it was very, very important. Number one was to hire a fantastic staff hire a fantastic staff. Twice a year is I bring the player in one time after the fall season and then one time after spring practice and we just talk about really some football but more importantly we talk about academics and we talk about life and we talk about his family and things that are going on other than football. And so when we do this, we do it honestly and openly. And so what that means is sometimes our players, they don't really like what they hear. That's too bad. All we want them to do is understand that we're, we want what's best for them. We want them to receive a well-rounded education. We want them to be the best student they can be. And we want them to be the best football player they can be. One of the things that's important in being a leader, in my opinion, is things like this. To be able to go out there, whether you agree with me or you don't agree with me, we're going to talk and we're going to have conversation, meaningful conversation about what's important to us in our different professions. The night before we played Wisconsin, which was our last game, we had 30 seniors this year. And a lot of those seniors were from Pennsylvania, so this relates to everybody in here. But again, it relates to people skills. So I said to these seniors at the beginning of the week, I said, hey, on Friday night, on Friday night before the game, I want each guy to stand up and just tell us about your Penn State experience. Just take five to six minutes and talk about your Penn State experience. I'm telling you, it was one of the best nights I've ever had in coaching. July 22nd. July 22nd is when the sanctions came out. I learned more about character. I learned more about good parenting versus bad parenting. I learned more about choices. I learned more about maturity. I learned more about coaching in that span of time when the sanctions came out than I had ever learned. And so 12 kids decided to transfer. We respected those decisions. We didn't, we didn't say anything badly about those guys. 
uh, when they left. We respected, they chose to leave and they left. So we were left with these, basically I think we had about 67 scholarship players and we had anywhere from 15 to 20 walk-ons. These were guys that were high character guys that committed to us, that practiced hard on a daily basis, could care less about bowl games. All they cared about was playing as good a football as they could for Penn State. All I talk to our guys all about all the time is, look, let's find good football players, good students, but high character guys. You think back to my New England experience, we had a fantastic quarterback. Nobody would argue with that, okay, unless you're a Steeler fan. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> Another word that came to mind when I thought about leadership was competence. I think competence is very important, and I learned a lot about being a competent leader when I was in the National Football League. You better have a plan. You better be detailed. You better never go into that meeting unprepared. When you're a leader of an organization, a leader of a team, a group of people, you have to be a competent leader. I think the last word that I think about when, being, when I think about being a good leader is courage. I think about courage. Having the courage to say, you know what? They're only letting us sign 15 guys for the next three years. We, can, we have to get down to 65 scholarships by 2014. If you know anything about that, every team that we play starting in 14 will have 85 scholarship players and we'll have 65. So we'll have 20 less than any team that we play. So what? Those are the rules with which we play on them. Let's have the courage to go forward. Let's have the courage to think of a different strategy as to how to attack this thing. How do we attack it? Hey, there's a way to attack it. One way, let's get some run-ons. Everybody calls them walk-ons. I've tried to change that name to run-ons because they never walk, so I don't understand why they walk on. <laughs> and most of our run-ons will come from Pennsylvania. It'll be the class, part of the class of 2013 that have turned down scholarship offers to fantastic schools. Early action to Penn, early action to Harvard, to walk on at Penn State and play football. When you're talking about courage, you have to be mentally tough. You can't worry about what everybody thinks, especially as a head football coach at Penn State. You know, you're, you're replacing a, a legendary coach in Joe Paterno. The, in my opinion, the body of work, coaching, wins, 409 wins, graduating over 85% of his players, that will never be matched. Number one is, you can't try to match that. I won't be here for 47 years, what are you, nuts? <laughs> Coaching when I'm eight? <laughs> Got another thing coming. <laughs> to me, it's about learning about that. It's about being mentally tough to say, you know what, look, th that was a fantastic era for, for Penn State football in many regards. But we got to start a new era. You have to be, a, you know, being, the word courage means being a risk taker. You have to be a risk taker. You're never going to win football games. You, you're never going to be a successful business person unless you're a risk taker. I really enjoy, especially in Pennsylvania, somebody asked me, do you do a lot of these? Yeah, I have about 35 to 40 speaking engagements between the end of the season and June. And the ones where they say, hey, can you come to, and, uh, to Dallas, Texas, or Atlanta, Georgia, or Oklahoma and do this, those ones don't really fire me up. The ones in Pennsylvania really fire me up because these are my type of people and I just really enjoy meeting everybody and, and being here this morning. Thank you very much.